Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can use HTTP client into your Blazor WebAssembly application. So in the last episode, instead of injecting HTTP client into a Razor component and calling Web API from the Razor components, uh, we injected view model into a Razor component, plan on writing all the uh, Web API calls in the view model so that we are writing minimum code on our component and following MVVM architecture, right? So we're gonna need HTTP client into our view model so that we can call Web APIs. So to inject HTTP client into our view model, you can pass it as parameter uh, into its constructor and you can do this with any c -sharp class into your Blazor WebAssembly application. But you do need to make sure that you're adding uh, HTTP client as one of the services into WebAssembly host builder. And whenever you create new Blazor application, it adds uh, as one of the services, one of the transient services into your builder. But the problem with using HTTP client as transient service uh, is even if you dispose HTTP client as a reference, the underlying socket connection is not released. And that way you can run into socket exhaustion issue. So one way to fix this issue is by using, uh, is by adding HTTP client as singleton services so that it will only create one reference and will be used across all your components and classes, right? But the problem with using HTTP client, adding HTTP client as a singleton service is that you can run into DNS change issue. That means if you change the URL of your base address, then you'll have to kill your application in order to get the new address for your web API. And to fix these issues, .NET introduced HTTP client factoring. HTTP client factory was introduced in .NET Core 2.1 and it manages pool of HTTP clients. So whenever you need HTTP client, you just request it from the pool to make your web API calls. And it also handles the socket exhaustion and DNS change issue behind the scenes. It also provides uh, poly-based extension methods like retries and circuit breakers. That means if uh, if you don't get results uh, from your web API for the first time, you can retry and get the results second or the third time. You can also add request middlewares to validate your request before calling your web API. That way you can uh, create less traffic for your web APIs. There are different ways that you can consume uh, your HTTP client factory, but we'll be concentrating on typed clients in our Blazing chat application. So let's go ahead and uh, implement HTTP client factory into our Blazing chat application. Okay, so like I mentioned in my slides, you can see that HTTP uh, client is added as a transient service into our host builder. And this comes in by default. Whenever you create a new Blazor WebAssembly application, this gets added into your project, okay? And if you're wondering where this HTTP client is coming from, you can go to your project file and you can see this package reference added into your project file, which is system.net HTTP JSON, okay? So instead of uh, injecting this HTTP client into our Razor component, I would like to inject it into my view model and make Web API calls from there. Before I do that, uh, I just want to mention that in the last episode, we were calling get profile from uh, from our main function in program.cs. So I got, I got rid of that code and uh, uh, I added that get profile call on my on initialized of my user component, okay? This is throwing an all warning because, you know, uh, it's an async function. So we'll fix this issue as we go, uh, as we make progress into this video, okay? So let's go ahead and inject this HTTP client into our view model and make some web API calls. So uh, for injecting HTTP client into a C sharp class of uh, your uh, uh, of your Blazor WebAssembly application, uh, you can pass it as constructor, pass it as parameter of your constructor. So I can say that HTTP client and HTTP client, and this is how HTTP client, which is getting added into as services, will get injected into my profile view model. This is throwing an error because we'll have to bring in a namespace called as using. Uh, using system dot uh, dot uh, HTTP and then um, it's going to throw one more error because you can see that it's throwing error on one of the operators 
the reason why is because now uh, the constructor asks for HTTP client is uh, HTTP client becomes mandatory for all the constructors. So let's go ahead and create a constructor which doesn't really take any parameters. So I'm going to create a constructor and say that this one doesn't really take any parameter and that should fix my problem. You can see that that fixes the problem. All right, so let's go ahead and catch this HTTP client and use it for calling our web API. For that, I'm going to create a uh, private property here. I'm going to create HTTP client and say underscore HTTP client so that we can distinguish them. And uh, we can assign uh, the injected HTTP client to our local HTTP client. And we can say that please assign the injected HTTP client to this uh, this property, okay? All right, so like, let's go ahead and use this uh, HTTP client uh, into our update profile. For that, I'm gonna uncomment this code, and uh, you can see that we were using HTTP client, uh, which was injected in through a razor component, and we had just commented this code. So let's go ahead and use this one. And when I uh, replace that, you can you can see that it's still throwing error because uh, we'll have to convert our void function into async task. Uh, and we'll have to bring in uh, a namespace system threading dot tasks and then uh, it's gonna still throw error because we'll have to bring in some extension methods which are in system.net http.json package so i'll bring in that package and you can see that all the errors are gone this function what, what's happening here is http client is calling put as json async and i'm passing a string which is web api path and then i'm passing a user to update into the system so we are calling http put method to update our user update our profile into our database so we're gonna need user which we can take it from the current um, current view model so for that i can say that user user dot uh, uh, user uh, variable and th this is going to change to the current um a uh, current view model right we don't have this profile view model like we had it into razor components so i'm going to change it to this and that way this current object will assign will get converted into user and the user will get passed to or passed to our web api to update into our system okay all right so let's go ahead and do the same thing for our get profile so i'm going to convert this uh, get profile into async task get profile and then we can convert our um, uh, http client call to underscore http client and that should fix my problem and then we'll have to assign the user which is getting pulled which is getting pulled from the database uh, to the current object and you can see that I can't assign this to user right we cannot assign that because you know it's object oriented properties you cannot assign this because it's read only so we cannot assign this to it so that's why I created um, a, a function which is which is called as load current object and this function uh, will take a profile view model as parameter and it will assign all the properties of view model to the current object current object property so let's go ahead and call that function so i'm going to say load current object i'm going to pass i'm going to pass user here which will get converted into profile view model because we created uh created uh, the operators the implicit operators and it will convert into profile view model and profile view model will convert uh, our uh will load our current object with the properties which is getting pulled from the database right so let's go ahead and see if there are more errors or not. You can see that the uh, interface is throwing an error. It's saying that we do not have get profile and update profile implemented into this class. And the reason why that is throwing error because uh, you know update profile and get profile are returning void, but we changed that to task. So we'll have to change this to task. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So I'm gonna we'll have to bring in namespace for this. So I'm gonna bring in using system.threading.tasks and if i go back then you can see that the problem will go away all right nice so now we have uh, our view model ready we injected http client we assigned it to local variable and then we used it for calling put as json async and we, we are calling also get from json async okay mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have to change one more thing in here. We can call, uh, we can put a wait keyword in front of it because we can wait for, uh, wait for our function to finish calling. And this will, um, 
as this is an async function now this will not throw any warning it will say that okay um, on on initialized async is calling an async function okay let's run this and see if this is working or not so i'm gonna i'm gonna run my uh, run my project i'm gonna go to my browser and uh, you can see that when i loaded the page it it is currently not loading john smith uh, so let's refresh our uh, refresh our page to get uh, the latest bits and when I refresh the page you can see that it makes connection to my database and pulls uh, makes connection to my web API and pulls the information in onto my page that's awesome right and we did not have to the only th line that we had to write is just get profile and it binds and it calls uh, HTTP functions from the view model and it does all those things uh, from other class that you can share with other UI frameworks okay and you can also update your uh, data too so if I you know update john smith to john smith 11 and update profile you can see the message i'm going to navigate to some other page come back here and you can see the updated data getting loaded into my properties that's pretty awesome right so that's how you can inject uh http client inject http client into your view model and make um uh, make web api calls and you know uh, update and get profile update and uh, get data from your web apis all right so uh but we like like i mentioned in the slides you know adding uh http client as transient service it's not a good idea because you can run into socket exhaustion issues and it's not a good idea to add it as singleton either because you can run into dns uh change issue so we are not going to use this um uh, we're not going to add http client as transient service instead of that we're gonna use typed http clients so we're going to use uh i http client factory to create um uh, to create clients and we're going to use those uh for calling web apis and to convert our singleton um services uh, into a typed uh typed clients the only thing that you need to do is say that http client and uh, the the, uh, the abstract reference and the concrete type that you're passing should inject http client in order to in order for this http add http client to work and you can name your uh you can also name your http client and like i said that it should inject and we have already injected that http client into our view model and that is using uh you know that service to call web apis and get an update data uh, you can also name your uh, HTTP client uh, saying that, you know, the name of the HTTP client factory that we're adding is blazing, uh, blazing chat client using chat client and we can also uh, mention the base address of our uh, of our HTTP client you can say that client is equal to client is equal to uh, client client base address base address and this is going to be same base address that we uh, that we assigned to the HTTP client that we added as transient service so I'm going to copy the same base address and assign it here and that will uh, that will be the base address of my HTTP client factory that I'm adding into adding into adding as a adding as a typed HTTP client into into my blazer web assembly application so let's go ahead and run this we did not change anything into our view model and in our profile uh, profile that eraser component the only change that i made i removed the uh, transient http service and added i http client factory as typed clients into our into our services and we are assuming that this will use this uh, so our application will use this HTTP client to get an update data. So let's stop the services, we run them, go back to our browser. And when I refresh the page, you can see that it's still pulling the data from the database. And if I want to, if I want to update the data, remove this 11, 
and update John Smith's profile. You can see that profile gets updated. If I move to some other page and come back here, you can see the updated data onto my page. So this is how you can use IHTTP Client Factory into your Blazor WebAssembly application. And you can also add uh, HTTP message handlers, as uh, uh, policy handlers, you know, to add retries whenever, if your web API fails for the first time, you can after, you can try after some time, some milliseconds, you can add some HTTP message handlers to add request layers uh, between your application and your web API call to, you know, validate your service before uh, actually making call to your uh, actually making call to your uh, web API okay and that is I have covered already in my Blazor server application and I've mentioned the links to to those videos in uh, the video description so you can check out those video for more information but I'm gonna stop here uh, and because you know we don't really need a retry and uh, message handlers as of now in blazing chat application but if you're curious about those concepts you can check them out in the video description in the next episode i'm going to convert our contacts page and our signings page into using mvvm pattern uh, so whatever i did into my profile uh, profile.razor where i did not write much of code onto my page in order to update and get data onto my page. Uh, Seeing similar things that I'm gonna do with contacts, I'm gonna uh, uh, you know not talk in my next episode and uh, quickly fast forward and update my contact and settings page. Okay. If you have any questions about this episode, uh, let me know in the comment section. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. The links are in the video description. And thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks for watching bye